Welcome to the seminar on panelization of CFS framing, what every engineer should know. I'm pleased to be here, here with you today and uh, thank you for joining us. This is my first time giving this presentation in this format, so hopefully the timing will work out. Um, you'll notice as we go through this that much of the information, uh, with as much information as there is to cover on a pan presentation about panelization, I'll only to have to scratch the surface of this topic. If you find that you would like SKJA to provide a deeper dive into any of the topics I cover here today, please list them in the webinar evaluation. If there's enough interest, we may be able to provide a seminar on those specific topics at a later date. I also want to encourage you to submit any questions you may have as we go through this presentation. Questions always make the Q&A much more easier, um, and it's great to get see um, uh, what questions might be out there. So please feel free to um, submit your question at any time, and uh, you can, you're welcome to include the slide, slide number as well if you'd like, and I'll try to get to all of your questions and comments during our three question and answer session. So let's get started. So here's a little outline of what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about um, a little bit of the why, uh, the types of uh, cold form steel panels, the limitations, uh, framing member sizing, manufacturing, connections, coordination, lifting, and then uh, we'll wrap up with a few uh, miscellaneous items. So let's get started into the why. So um, the first reason is increased quality, safety, and speed. So increased quality, the idea is that because it's being done in a factory, um, and in a controlled environment that the quality is much more repetitive and, um, and thus can uh, be done um, at a higher quality and then also can be um, checked in an easier uh, rate. Safety, instead of workers working up on top of a building, they are um, working on the ground, usually in a, a flat situation, so it's a significantly safer um, situation for workers. And speed, as you can imagine, uh, instead of stick building where you're putting up each individual member and making the connections, doing panels can significantly increase. It can take the time it takes to put an exterior uh, wall together from, uh, you know, months to weeks. Reductions in waste. Um, because there is going to be a lot of pre-planning that happens when you're going to be doing panelization uh, in the factories, they will know uh, or the manufacturing facilities that will know what size members they need. So a lot of times they'll have members cut to length. So um, instead of a lot of the leftover material that you'll get on a job site from um, the, the cutting of the material, you, know, you have a little one foot section, two foot section here and there that ends up getting tossed. Um, in this case, you're using um, all the material is cut to length out of, let's say a roll former or it's order to length. Um, so it can significantly reduce the waste. Some uh, panelizers are starting to include MEP systems. Uh, electrical is, is very easy to include, um, at least the uh, not necessarily the electrical component itself, but your um, boxes, electrical boxes, your um, whips that the wires run through, those kind of things. And then it can go from there um, as far as including um, plumbing and um, uh, even you know, potentially mechanical type systems can also be included. The other big reason for this um, is that the construction industry is really struggling with a limited skilled, skilled field labor. Um, so the idea behind panelization is that um, you're getting stuff done with less skilled, let's say workers, because um, you're uh, doing things in a much more controlled environment. So therefore, um, they don't have to be as skilled as far as reading plans. Uh, and then, um, then you need significantly less uh, folks in the field over a less time frame. So because you can get the jobs done faster, you can have a crew of, let's say, six to eight people who can move from job to job um, over a few months as opposed to being stuck on jobs for months on end. So why panelization versus modular? Uh, they both have places in the industry. Um, as you can tell, panelization, especially when you're talking about uh, just sheathed or unsheathed uh, cold form steel panels, you can pack a lot onto a truck. So you can see here there's, uh, you know, probably 30 panels stacked up on this one truck. Modular um, also, you know, has its benefits. Uh, the big difference with modular is that you're shipping a lot of air. So in order to make the modulars uh, or the modules uh, beneficial or cost effective, you got to put a lot of stuff in them. So to just build out and take cold form steel and put sheathing on it and build it into a module, um, you'd, you'd never be able to get the cost to work out because you don't add enough. You've got to add finishes, 
uh, probably MEP, things like that to make a module uh, work out. So those are some of the um, differences between why you know, people are still definitely focusing on panelization. Our types of uh, panelized, uh, we have exterior panels. In general, they're at least sheathed. Um, conceptually, I guess you could do um, exterior panels with just cold form steel framing, uh, but you're, you're losing out on quite a bit of benefit of getting that sheathing installed while the panel's um, on the ground in a, in a manufacturing setting as opposed to somebody either up on scaffolding or, or up on a, a boom lift um, screwing in and doing a repetitive task. Uh, interior panels, um, non-laboring interior panels, uh, those can also um, can be done. Those get a little bit harder because um, you usually need the panel stiff enough in order to be able to transport, which uh, means that you're talking about some heavier gauge material.